There's no denying that Kris Jenner is the mastermind behind the reality show that turned her family into a billion-dollar enterprise. But did the matriarch momager do it all with straight-up business savvy, or was it really just smoke and mirrors? Need a recap to decide? These are some of the fakest storylines on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. I just know something big is gonna happen. It looked like something straight out of a 90s rom-com, Kanye West proposing to Kim Kardashian in the San Francisco Giants baseball park, complete with a jumbotron popping the question. Per the Daily Mail, the rapper's finishing touches included Roman candles burning, a 50-piece orchestra playing, and their family and friends hiding in the dugouts. The moment was perfect for the show's ratings, with executive producer Kris Jenner cranking out a two-episode special dedicated to the celebration. But it also led skeptical fans to wonder, was the whole thing staged? To get engaged and then to see all my family and all my friends be there really surprises me. According to Radar Online, when a surprise engagement part one aired, the events depicted allegedly took place prior to Kim's surprise engagement. Oddly enough, though, the reality star was caught already wearing her massive new ring in some scenes, a week before the follow-up episode with the proposal aired. With viewers in a total outrage, Hollywood Life reached out to the show's producers, who explained, The footage of Kim, while wearing her engagement ring, although filmed after the proposal, was a better fit for the first episode of the two-part engagement special. We'll let you decide. Chris, I know that we've given you a really hard time over the last couple of months. Long before Kim and Kanye aired their engagement spectacular, Kim had another made-for-TV relationship her two-part special, Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding, a Kardashian event. Tying the knot with NBA star Chris Humphreys, the duo celebrated with a lavish ceremony. But in the days that followed, Kim's new man appeared to be a bit of a jerk. Can I tell you what another one of my pet peeves is? What? Someone that brushes their teeth so hard that they make the entire mirror. <laughs> After the reality TV star filed for divorce, Humphreys sued, claiming that he was made to look like a villain in the series. Per Radar Online, the show producer Russell J ended up giving a 165-page deposition where he admitted that there were, quote, at least two scenes that were scripted, reshot, or edited. We have an amazing fan base that watched the show. I, you know, we didn't, we don't do anything for ratings. According to Life & Style, Jay revealed that a scene where Kim complained to mom Chris about her marriage was actually shot after she had filed for divorce. To make matters worse, another scene which featured Kim freaking out at Humphreys over a party he threw in a hotel while she was out of town was allegedly faked, too. It turned out she was actually in the hotel. As a friend of the NBA player dished to the outlet, Anyone who loves someone would not team up with their production team to make them look like a fool on TV. It's no secret Kim cares about looking immaculate. The brunette beauty once revealed on her sister Kendall Jenner's app that while vacationing in Mexico, she quote, took 6,000 selfies in order to get the perfect picture. So it should come as no surprise that when her now ex Humphreys proposed to her, she allegedly demanded the scene be reshot. To me, our love is simple. And I don't want, like, all the distractions and everything crazy going around. A source close to Humphreys dish to Radar Online, Kim told Chris how, where, and when to propose. She was in full hair and makeup. Chris wanted it to be very intimate and romantic, but all of his ideas were shot down by production officials and Kim. This is, like, the moment that every girl has dreamed of their entire life. It turns out poor Humphreys wanted to propose to Kim in Minnesota, but ultimately had absolutely no say in the matter. Some of our favorite moments on the show come from the earlier seasons when the sisters weren't plumped to perfection and hysterics were a part of the norm. One of the most iconic? Kim losing her $75,000 earring in the ocean in Bora Bora. Wait. My earring's gone! Are you Humphreys jumped in to help, but even that wasn't stopping the waterworks. What's wrong with you guys? My diamond earring came off in the ocean and it's gone. I'm Kim, not... there's people that are dying. Amazingly, younger sis Kylie retrieved the jewel from the bottom of the ocean just moments later. Kim, oh my god, we just found the earring. Are you serious? <laughs> Where did you find it? I found, it was just, it's huge! It was just laying there sparkling. 
but according to Radar Online, the whole scene may have been staged for the cameras. A source revealed to the outlet, Kim was crying hysterically, but then miraculously, one of her younger sisters, Kylie, found the earring in the ocean. It was probably six to eight feet deep, and Chris commented to Kim how unbelievable it was that the valuable earring was found as the current in the ocean in Bora Bora is very, very strong. Kim just said, I know, with a very big smile on her face. Years later, Kylie retold the story to BuzzFeed, claiming it was pretty much no big deal. And I saw something shining, swam all the way down there, it was like 10 feet, picked it up, and it was the shining diamond. It was, I literally found it in two minutes. Khloe Kardashian's marriage to Lamar Odom was wrought with scandal. In fact, the former NBA champ revealed in his 2019 memoir, Darkness to Light, that he cheated on Khloe with countless women, wrestled drug addiction, and ultimately couldn't handle the, quote, lethal cocktail of the spotlight, addiction, a diminishing career, and infidelity. How much do you think you hurt her? I mean, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. But producers milked as much as they could out of the storyline even after their marriage was over. Shortly after Chloe left Lamar, she was spotted clubbing with The Game, as reported by TMZ. But the strangest part of the night was when it looked like Kris Jenner was chaperoning. According to Radar Online, the whole thing was, of course, staged, hence Jenner's attendance. A source told The Tab, The storyline involves Chris and Chloe being single girls out on the town. Chris was the one to suggest it be filmed, and Chloe jumped on board. At this point, Chloe and the game are just friends. She trusts him, but there is nothing romantic going on. Get ready, Chloe! We're going out! In a 2013 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Chloe and Chris decided to do some mother daughter bonding by getting totally wasted and hurling toilet paper at a pregnant Kim's house. I just think we have to do something really crazy tonight. According to the Daily Mail, the premise of the episode saw Chloe feeling left out that her two older sisters were bonding now that Kim was set to become a mom. Cue the family matriarch, who thought it would be fun, and probably great for TV, to get drunk on tequila and go, quote, spray string all over Kim's mansion and hurl dozens of rolls of toilet paper on the walls. This is a 007. I'm gonna take a mission. Of course, the plan was hilarious. Unless you were Kim. The star proceeded to have an on-camera meltdown, even threatening to call the police. Who TP'd my house? Who TP'd my house, for real? I have no idea, why are you asking me? I'm here. I'm just not in the mood for this. Although the whole episode seemed like Chloe and her mom were simply being spontaneous, it may not have been entirely truthful. A source close to the show exclusively dished to Radar Online, it was planned well in advance with Kim fully aware before the prank went down that her house was going to be covered with toilet paper. She was never going to call the cops on her mom and Chloe. It's just insulting that they are trying to pass this off as how they really live their lives. Live a little, it's toilet paper! In 2014, it was revealed that the Jenner home used for the exterior shots didn't actually house any member of the infamous Car Jenner clan. So all those Kardashian tours you were planning to do in Los Angeles? Think again. Kim decided to finally come clean, telling Mobio Insider, when we film inside, that's obviously our real home. My old home in Beverly Hills was really my home and I would get people showing up at all hours ringing my gate and had to call the police on several occasions. People hopping the gate and scaring me. It was so unsafe. The Hollywood Star Tours would stop by too because they recognized my home from our show. And after that, we realized how unsafe it is to show the exterior of our homes. So now we use different homes for the outside for security purposes. I think we're really happy with where we're at right now. It all makes sense, but we won't deny we're a little disappointed. Per TMZ, the fake house finally sold for real in 2018 for $5.25 million, after 11 years of sitting on the market. Your lips look amazing. Really? Yeah. I almost said they were too big yesterday. Are you talking about her lips? One of the most legendary Car Jenner question marks has been the talk of Kylie's famous pout. Did she or didn't she have lip injections as a young teen? The whole clan backed up the youngest Jenner when she said she didn't get any work done, even bringing in big sis Kim to defend her. Speaking with Sam and Nick Chapman, Kim claimed Kylie only wears lip liner, saying, 
She like draws her lip like, you know, and it looks amazing. But not everyone bought it. Kylie denied the rumors for as long as possible, even telling E! News she was, quote, kind of sick of talking about her lush lips and adding, In pictures, I pout them out a lot, so I don't know. I love, I think big lips are awesome. Nevertheless, it was pretty obvious there was a drastic change happening to the makeup mogul, and after months of speculation, the star came clean on, where else? Keeping up with the Kardashians. With fans around the world tuning in, Kylie revealed, I have temporary lip fillers. It's just an insecurity of mine. I want to admit to the lips, but people are so quick to judge me on everything. Since giving birth to her daughter, Stormy, Kylie decided to live a more natural life and dissolved her filler in the summer of 2018. But we're assuming she missed her legendary pout since by October, she started getting them again, this time in moderation. I'm telling my story. Caitlyn Jenner's coming out as transgender in 2015 was a surprise to the world, and it certainly put pressure on the Olympian's two daughters, Kendall and Kylie, with the Kylie cosmetics queen feeling the most overwhelmed. I do want to meet her. It'll be a little uncomfortable in the beginning. Perhaps the tension had something to do with Caitlyn's Vanity Fair cover and interview, which left the Kardashian clan stunned. Kim tried sitting down with the former athlete on an episode of the show to explain the impact of the interview, saying, You said Kendall and Kylie were a distraction. And so when they read that, they're going to think, I don't know if they'll quite understand that. Regardless, the family found themselves with another storyline for the season, as they all dealt with Caitlyn's transition. In one episode, Kylie revealed to Kim that she was nervous about her appearance at the Billboard Awards and being asked by reporters about her dad. I, I'm getting super nervous and anxious about doing these interviews. I have like a few seconds. It all seemed pretty legit until a blog titled Keeping Up With Continuity claimed that the talk was filmed a whole month after the award ceremony took place, alleging, the teenager posted a picture on Instagram on the day where the blog claims it was actually filmed and can be seen wearing the exact same outfit as she appears in the episode. I don't want to lose you and my kids, but like, are we going to spend the rest of our life doing this? Courtney and Scott Disick have certainly endured a tumultuous relationship throughout the years, all put on display for keeping up with the Kardashians. This isn't a joke. This is my life. Although Lord Disick has been linked to Sophia Ritchie since 2017, viewers have wondered if some of the more drama-fueled scenes between Cord and her baby daddy were actually scripted to stir up relationship troubles for the show. I just understand how you guys changed so much in your relationship. Well, in the beginning, you guys were like the same person. Like years ago? Yeah. According to the Daily News, in a Kardashian spin-off show, Courtney and Chloe Take the Hamptons, there was a storyline where Disick acted out, staying at a club until 3 a.m. while a pregnant Courtney calls him repeatedly. Can I come home? You're not allowed to come here in that state of mind. Although they aren't together anymore, the former couple is still on great terms. In an interview with Paper in 2019, Court revealed that she's proudest of her relationship with Scott and new girlfriend. Hey. It's not every day a blended family goes on vacation together. We're going to be in each other's lives forever. Like, we are soulmates in a sense, you know, no matter what, whether we're ever together again or not. When Caitlyn Jenner first transitioned, it seemed ex-wife Kris Jenner and their reality TV brood were more than supportive, but family rifts have since come to light. Here are the details about Caitlyn Jenner's strained relationship with the Kardashians. When Caitlyn Jenner's revelatory Vanity Fair cover hit newsstands in 2015, she finally got to speak in depth about her marriage with Kris Jenner. But unfortunately for Kris, the unflattering details didn't exactly thrill the Kardashian matriarch. Caitlyn told the outlet, I think in a lot of ways she became less tolerant of me. Then I'd get upset and the whole relationship kind of fizzled. A lot of times she wasn't very nice. People would see how I got mistreated. She controlled the money. All that kind of stuff. Understandably, Chris was upset with Caitlyn's shady assessment of their union. She described her feelings on how Caitlyn ended the marriage as the quote, most passive-aggressive thing I think I've ever experienced. On an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Chris said of the Vanity Fair piece, He can go f himself. I honestly wish I never met this man. But that high-profile airing of grievances would prove to be just the beginning of an increasingly ugly feud.
On the first season of Caitlyn's reality series, I Am Kate, Kim Kardashian made it clear she didn't approve of Caitlyn criticizing her mom in Vanity Fair. Talk bad about my mom. I'm telling you. I come for you. She also accused Caitlyn of distancing herself from the rest of the family and for still having a little of her Bruce-like edge. You still have a little Bruce in you. I thought Caitlyn would be a little... Kinder. Really? Kinder, sweeter, gentler. Kim also pointed out that Caitlyn had called daughters Kendall and Kylie Jenner a, quote, distraction in the interview, and had been spending all her time with her new friends in the trans community. You look amazing. It's your time. But you don't have to bash us. You got the fame, but you're losing your family. Chris and Khloe Kardashian also confronted Caitlyn on the show, with Chris asking her ex for some of the same attention that Caitlyn was currently giving to her new friends. You're sensitive and amazing to all these new people in your life. You're just not so sensitive and amazing to the family that you left behind. And Chloe took a few shots on behalf of the family, saying Caitlyn should leave Chris out of the conversation entirely, instead of dragging her through the mud, and adding, We want to support you and be there for you, but we don't think that that entails you speaking negatively about my mom. The immediate aftermath of Caitlyn's transition saw the dynamic between her and Chris turn decidedly negative. But there were a few instances where they tried to at least be civil, according to Entertainment Tonight. In 2015, the two appeared together at the Victoria's Secret fashion show in support of Kendall's first walk at the event. And according to witnesses, the exes seemed happy to see each other, and even took the time for a quick pic in the front row. One year later, they were still on decent enough terms for Caitlyn to land an invite to Chris's annual star-studded Christmas Eve party. I'm getting emotional. It makes me sad. It does. It makes me so sad. But it wouldn't take long for reality TV's former first couple to once again be at each other's throats when, just four months later, Caitlyn dropped her memoir, The Secrets of My Life. After that, nothing would be the same. It's just... it's just the way she is. Though Caitlyn's book only dedicates 20 pages to the Kardashians, there was still enough dirt to potentially fracture this once tight-knit family forever. After reading the damaging memoir, in which Caitlyn suggests Chris knew all about her desire to transition, both Kim and Chris unleashed their fury on Caitlyn. I have always had Caitlyn's back, but she is a liar. Kim took issues with just about every claim Caitlyn made about Chris in the book, including the assertion that Chris dominated the family finances and that doing a reality show was all Caitlyn's idea. But what seemed to upset Kim the most were Caitlyn's claims regarding Kim's late father, Robert Kardashian. Supposedly, Robert admitted he knew O.J. Simpson was guilty but represented him anyway to, quote, get back at his remarried ex. In response, Kim said on an episode of Keeping Up, My relationship with Caitlyn was strained, but if you talk about my dad, I will cut you. Caitlyn's memoir evoked a similar response from Chris, who initially reacted on the show by implying that it was the last straw with Caitlyn. None of it made sense. Everything she says is all made up. Unfortunately for Caitlyn, that icy dynamic was quickly adopted by the rest of the Kardashian crew. Though the Kardashians were exceptionally vocal about Caitlyn after her memoir came out, the chatter apparently ended as soon as the camera shut off. For as much shade as Chloe, Courtney, and Kim have thrown at Caitlyn, there certainly hasn't been much FaceTime between them in recent days. Caitlyn confirmed just how distant she'd grown from the family during an event at the Cambridge Union in 2017, claiming, To be honest, I don't talk to them anymore. Kim, I haven't talked to in a year. And as far as Caitlyn is concerned, the distance between her and the Kardashian daughters is all one-sided. She added, In the book, I expressed some opinions and got shut down. They made it more about them on television. That's caused a lot of the separation between us. The only holdouts from the Kardashian crew who maintained some semblance of a relationship with Caitlyn at that time were her biological daughters, Kylie and Kendall Jenner. However, according to E! News as of 2018, even Caitlyn's relationship with Kendall was, quote, very strained. It was nothing personal. But you have to realize we take it personal. On the season 12 premiere of Keeping Up, Chloe and Caitlyn weren't exactly on good terms, and it all was because Chloe did an interview with radio shock jock Howard Stern and revealed her feelings of betrayal by Caitlyn because some people knew she was transitioning before their family ever did. Chloe said on the show, We felt so like, what, what the f? We've been asking you, and why? Why do business people know? Like, I never want someone to feel like they have one up on our family. After the segment, Chloe reportedly received angry texts from Caitlyn, which prompted Chloe to call her mom, saying, She could tell me to f off all she wants. I don't have a relationship with her. I'm done. Chloe and Caitlyn showed brief signs of reconciliation during an April 2017 episode of Keeping Up, when Chloe admitted that she missed having her stepfather in her life. For me, you're all I remember. Bruce was. So not having you in my life, it's a huge blow. But by October of that year, things had gone sour again, with Chloe accusing Caitlyn of trying to twist the situation, when the reality was something else. She said on the show, Oh, f off, and it's not because of your trans. That's not why I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you because you're a bad, mean person. 
Aside from his initial support of Caitlyn's transition, Rob Kardashian hasn't spoken much about his former stepfather other than to tell People magazine in 2016, as long as Caitlyn is happy, I'm happy. But once again, it was Caitlyn who offered the real truth about her strained relationship with Rob when she told The View in 2017, I've never met Black China. I never met the kid. Rob, I haven't really had a serious conversation with in years. Kourtney Kardashian also aligned herself with her mom and sisters when she said of Caitlyn on a season 14 episode of the show, It's just like the personality just doesn't vibe with ours. She also refuted Caitlyn's claim that Chris hoarded all of the money they made from a successful motivational speaking business in the 90s. Court claimed, They made the money together, even when mom would book appearances. I worked for her. I would hear her phone calls in the office. She would hustle to get speeches. You start talking about how I was hoarding money when we didn't even have it? One of the big moments from the season 14 premiere of Keeping Up was the family discovering news of Caitlyn's gender reassignment surgery via the press. Though they'd long since cut ties with her, it still somehow came as a shock that Caitlyn hadn't directly told them about it. So that means they snipped? Yeah, they snipped. But like, why couldn't she say that to us? I, like, we would understand. In a January 2018 interview with Piers Morgan, Caitlyn revealed that she hadn't told any of the Kardashians about her surgery because it was, quote, none of their business. When asked by Morgan why Caitlyn hadn't told her own family about her transitioning, she claimed, it was because I didn't want them to leak it to the press. Of course I didn't trust them. Just in case Caitlyn revealing that she didn't trust the Kardashians wasn't enough of an indicator of the family's fractured status, Kim had already addressed the matter on Watch What Happens Live in 2017. What are the chances of your mom, Chris, and Caitlyn ever speaking again? Zero. One. Really? No, I would say two. Two percent. She went on to claim that the two percent had to do with Kendall and Kylie. The wounds opened by Caitlyn's memoir were still fresh by late 2017, when Chris was defensive about claims that she knew about Caitlyn being transgender through their marriage. Did she tell you early on? No. Oh, I did too. Oh, yes. She keeps saying she told me, but she didn't. It appears that Caitlyn has since managed to mend her relationship with her ex-wife. In November 2019, the star shared an Instagram tribute to Chris's birthday, writing, what an amazing mother and businesswoman you are. Love you. What's more meaningful is the fact that Caitlyn defended Chris to her mother, Esther, later that month. According to Us Weekly, Esther went on record with the Daily Mail saying that keeping up with the Kardashians had, quote, no plot, and that Chris made Caitlyn look unassertive and spineless. Caitlyn shut it down immediately, with a rep telling Us Weekly, Caitlyn's team adamantly denies her mother's statements. Caitlyn has time and time again said that the show is the best thing that has happened to their family, and is on great terms with Chris. It seems like Chloe may still be holding on to her grudge with Caitlyn. During a 2019 episode of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, the former Olympian revealed to her castmates that Chloe had the most difficulty with her transition. Chloe, for some reason, was pissed off about something through this whole process. Honestly, it's been five, six years, and I really haven't talked to her since. It was a devastating blow for Caitlyn, who raised Chloe since she was five years old. The month prior to the interview, Chloe had been the sole Kardashian sister to skip out on her former stepdad's 70th birthday party, according to TMZ. She was reportedly busy filming a commercial, so maybe there's hope for them yet. Kim managed to salvage her relationship with Caitlyn, but it was muddled thanks to a miscommunication. During a live Q&A in early 2020, Caitlyn revealed that Kim was the first of the Kardashians to discover her transition, saying, I talked to her. But then for the next nine months, she never brought the subject up again. And for those nine months, I thought, oh my god, was she upset about that? Caitlyn finally broached the topic with Kim once again, who said she didn't know if it was okay to talk about it because Caitlyn wasn't talking about it. Caitlyn added, I saw where she was coming from, and everything's fine now. We have a great relationship today. It's like New Year, drama-free. That's like our motto this year. Despite Chris and Caitlyn's seemingly tenuous reconciliation, it doesn't look like the trust has been built all the way back up. According to a source that spoke to The Sun, Chris was, quote, scared and horrified when Caitlyn signed on for the British reality series, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, because she feared the Olympian would divulge damaging secrets about their daughter's lives. This report came around the same time that Caitlyn was repping her ex-wife on Instagram. So how good was the relationship, really? Kind of trying to figure out if uh, I'm doing the right thing. According to the source, Chris was concerned that part of Caitlyn's alleged massive fee to appear on the series might have had to do with spilling tightly held family secrets. While she supposedly didn't care about her ex divulging details about their marriage, she was reportedly concerned that any tea spilling by Caitlyn could be, quote, damaging to Kim and Kylie's brands. The source added, Before Caitlyn left for Australia, Chris wished her good luck and let her know she'd be watching to see what she says. It seems like Chris's worries were unfounded. When Caitlyn got voted off the series in December 2019, Kendall and Kylie surprised her with a big welcome home, according to People magazine. So it doesn't seem like anyone in that camp is mad about her stint on the show. Looks like there just might be a happy future for the Kardashian-Jenner clan yet. Everybody knows Kourtney Kardashian and her ex, Scott Disick, as reality stars. 
But being parents of their three children, Mason, Penelope, and Rain, is what they really want to be known for. Here's the truth about Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick's children. One of the most iconic moments on Keeping Up With The Kardashians is when Mason Dash Disick is born. After all, fans will never forget the scene when Kourtney Kardashian so famously pulled the baby out herself. When it came time to deliver the eldest Disick child, Kardashian wasn't planning to have it be a part of her family's reality show. No camera crew was even allowed in the delivery room. Courtney explained to Today Extra, Scott was filming it for our own purposes, like for a home movie. After experiencing what childbirth was really like, the two eventually opted to share their son's birth with the world. She added, I remember being so terrified to give birth because you see in movies everyone is screaming and it was so crazy, and my experience was amazing. I just felt something in me wanted to share that with people. Nearly three years later, Courtney decided to debut her daughter Penelope's birth on television too. However, their son Rain's birth story has always been kept off-screen. Shortly after launching her health and wellness website Poosh in 2019, Kourtney Kardashian posted an adorable photo of her daughter on Instagram. In it, she references Penelope as the, quote, CEO of Poosh. And that's actually not too far off from the truth. For years, Penelope's parents have nicknamed her Poosh, which ultimately influenced the name of the business. While it's a pretty spectacular way to come up with a company name, the young girl had a much bigger impact on Poosh than just that. According to Bustle, a press release from that same year described Penelope as the epitome of the Poosh girl, who plays by her own rules, colors outside the lines, and celebrates life with an infectious confidence and ease. The eldest Kardashian hopes her website will bring about discussions surrounding health and wellness without, quote, preaching or judging. Instead, Poosh wants to celebrate successfully living a healthy and happy life, just like little Penelope. December 14th will always be a special day for Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick. It was the day their first baby boy Mason was born. Five years later, it was the day that their second son Rain was born too. Kourtney wrote on Instagram, I still can't believe they have the same birthday. When Kardashian and Disick originally found out they were expecting another baby in December, they were set on making sure she didn't give birth to him on Mason's birthday. Courtney later admitted in a blog post via Us Weekly, I really tried to not have it happen so they could each have their day, but there was no way around it. It is truly so special and meant to be. When you think about it, it only makes sense that Lord Disick would have a child named Rain, yet the youngest Disick was almost named something else entirely, Preston. After baby Rain was born in 2014, Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick wanted to make sure they had picked out the perfect name for him. For an entire week after his arrival, they called him all sorts of things to see what felt right. I would try out a different name on different <laughs> days. <laughs> the whole day. One day, Rain, his name was Preston for one full day. Preston was the name that Disick had become particularly fond of. Yet Kardashian had a completely different plan for Preston in the end. I was He's like, so I know in my soul his name is Rain, and Scott didn't believe me. By the time they went to bed, the name Preston was officially a no-go. Is it really a surprise that the Disick kids have the most incredible playhouse? If your dad is the star of Flip It Like Disick, then it only makes sense. When the reality series first aired in 2019, one of the first things Scott Disick did was build his kids the ultimate playhouse to escape to in Kourtney Kardashian's backyard. After a bit of convincing with his ex, he made it happen for around $100,000. The kids' playhouse is equipped with hardwood floors that even match the inside of their mother's house, a private patio, French doors, and recessed lighting. The only thing missing inside is any sign of technology. Courtney told Architectural Digest, there's no iPads, phones, computers, video games, TVs. It's great for playing games and really just being imaginative. Kourtney Kardashian is a busy businesswoman. Having kids makes it even more chaotic. She admitted to Harper's Bazaar, getting everyone out the door by myself, it takes a long time. To save her time, her kids pick out their own outfits each morning. What helps out the eldest Kardashian mother even more is that she likes to match exactly what they're wearing, especially Penelope Disick. She added, the other day we were going to the movies and Penelope picked out a black and white striped dress. And it made it so much easier to pick a black and white striped t-shirt for Mason and a black and white t-shirt for me. In many posts on Instagram, fans can see Penelope and her mother in matching mommy and me attire. Sometimes it's not even the whole ensemble. Staying in the same color scheme is something the two of them like to do. She told Harper's Bazaar, I think it's fun to match. 
it doesn't need to be identical. So while we'll all continue to turn to the Kardashians for the latest looks, now we'll secretly know that the real style inspiration comes from the kids. In 2020, while most of us were sitting at home wishing we could get a haircut, Rain Disick decided to get his very first one at the age of five. The new do was all his idea, too. His mother said on Instagram simply, I am not okay, alongside a photo of his buzz cut. Prior to his iconic cut, the youngest Disick had always been known for his long locks. Unfortunately, his famous parents had always been criticized for not cutting it, too. After posting photos of him online over the years, many fans have been quick to comment on his hairdo. One mentioned on Instagram in 2019, she really needs to cut his hair. At that time, his mother was not having it. Her response, she really needs to not worry about kids that aren't her own. He is a happy boy. When it came to baptizing their kids, Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick went back to her roots and brought them all to Armenia. In 2019, the family hopped on a plane and headed to St. Hovannis Mikurtik, Church of the Mother See of Holy Ekmayadzin, for the extravagant occasion. It's known as the oldest one in the world. Oh, wow. It was wow. Uh, built in 303 AD. Oh, geez. Wow. Yeah. While it was a family affair, surprisingly, it wasn't their daughter Penelope Disick's first time visiting Armenia. In fact, according to Hollywood Life, she was baptized there a few years before her brothers. The Disick kids have extremely healthy diets. In fact, ever since 2020, their family only eats foods that are both dairy-free and gluten-free. At first, it was difficult to get used to such a strict diet. But there's a reason their mother makes them eat these specific foods. Courtney explained, We had muscle testing done, which showed we all have sensitivities to corn, gluten, and dairy. When they cut it out of their diets, the eldest Kardashian noticed that her kids were feeling a lot better. Yet that isn't to say they don't give in every once in a while. She added, I do let the kids have popcorn at the movies and a churro at Disneyland. After all, who could ever forget Penelope Disick's iconic Candyland birthday party? The Kardashians' iconic boutiques were something fans were quick to dash to as soon as they saw them on TV. In fact, according to Variety, keeping up with the Kardashians began as a way to try and draw attention to Dash. When it came time for Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick to name their first child Mason Dash Disick, it only seemed to make sense. However, his middle name actually wasn't inspired by the store. Courtney told Life & Style, That would be stupid. Dash is short for Kardashian, and it was my father's nickname. By this point, it's common knowledge that Courtney Kardashian and Scott Disick are some of the wealthiest parents in the world. According to Celebrity Net Worth, the two have a combined net worth of nearly $110 million. Yet even with that being the case, many fans would be surprised to know that their kids still wear a lot of hand-me-downs. Courtney shared to People, I kept a lot of Mason's clothes, like little blazers and loafers, and I've used them on Penelope. Over the years, mixing and matching the little one's clothing is something that the Disick family has done again and again. When Rain was born, he was spotted wearing hand-me-downs from his older siblings, and even from Kim Kardashian's oldest daughter, North. Fans have gotten to know Mason, Penelope, and Rain Disick over the years on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, yet none of them are allowed to watch the reality series themselves. Courtney shared with Cosmopolitan, some of the content is just not appropriate. Over the years, we as viewers have to agree. From the time Khloe Kardashian went to jail, to those moments where the Disick kids could watch their parents' breakup unfold, there's a whole lot of family drama. Over the course of 20 seasons, however, the Disick kids have caught a few glimpses of the Kardashians in all their glory. Courtney admitted to Cosmopolitan, Once, I was in the shower. Mason woke up, and it happened to be on. He was like, who is Black China? I was like, this is why they don't watch the show. Mason Disick's parents have put him on television for literally his entire life. Yet when the oldest Disick turned 10, he started making moves that seemed to follow in their footsteps. In 2020, he became a star online. He created his very own Instagram account, where he started dishing out all the dirt on his family. However, after talking to fans all about his aunt Kylie Jenner's relationship status online, his parents were quick to delete his account. Yet, his aspirations to be a social media star didn't stop there. After appearing on a number of famous TikTok accounts, including one belonging to one of his mother's best friends, Addison Rae, Mason quickly made himself one of his own. Yet, that also got deleted by his parents because he was too young. Lo and behold, within a number of days, Mason's third online account was up and running. As a new online presence, he spoke his mind on anything and everything. Yet, he seemed to gain the most attention after he made comments about other online influencers, like Jeffree Star. 
which turned into quite possibly one of the most unexpected online feuds anyone has ever seen. Though Mason is now offline, he has no doubts he would have made it big if it weren't for his parents. Though Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick aren't together today, they still may plan for another little one together in the future. Over the years, the two have admitted multiple times on Keeping Up With The Kardashians that they would love to have a fourth baby. Scott's like, we're going for baby number four. Was that a joke? Or is that serious? I want to know. Are you really having a baby? No. No. In March 2021, the eldest Kardashian even admitted that she had some of her eggs frozen. She shared on Lady Parts. Hopefully they're sitting there okay, just for, you never know. That same year, fans were even speculating that she was pregnant after seeing some photos she posted on Instagram. For now, there haven't been any official announcements on a fourth child. Yet, there's a lot of evidence suggesting that the Disick children may just get another sibling someday soon. Courtney admitted to Cosmopolitan, I could see myself with six kids. I just don't know what's in God's plan. Surrogacy secrets, very public cheating scandals, and endless plastic surgery rumors. The Kardashians have faced a ton of rumors throughout their careers, some of which turned out to be true. Khloe Kardashian initially seemed to have something special with NBA player Lamar Odom. The couple tied the knot in 2009, but three years later, the tabloid forecast for the couple looked bleak. In March 2012, Star claimed that the pair had been faking their happy marriage for the sake of their reality series after Odom got caught cheating on Chloe. Months later, In Touch shared accounts from multiple eyewitnesses who reportedly saw Odom with other women. In January 2013, Chloe denied rumors that divorce was imminent in an interview with E! News. However, the good American founder filed for divorce in December 2013. In a 2014 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Chloe revealed that she put on a facade after learning about her husband's infidelity. I kept in hiding. Every time there was something going on, I would have to lie or conceal or cover up. Odom also confessed to being unfaithful in his 2019 autobiography, Darkness to Light, a memoir. In 2011, Tyga made his first appearance on Keeping Up With The Kardashians when he performed at Kendall Jenner's 16th birthday party. He later scored an invite to Kylie Jenner's 17th birthday bash in August 2014, and TMZ shared a video of the rapper allegedly urging an underage Kylie to down a tequila shot. The following month, Star claimed that Tyga and Kylie were an item and that their relationship started when Tyga was still engaged to his ex, Black China. In October 2014, E! News quoted a source who claimed that the couple had been dating for months. However, Kris Jenner attempted to shut down the romance rumors during an appearance on On Air with Ryan Seacrest, saying that the pair were simply in the same friendship group. Tyga denied the rumors himself when he appeared on The Breakfast Club in February 2015, saying, I want to be clear to everybody that I didn't leave my family um, to be with Kylie. But the following month, Tyga finally confirmed the relationship. In a since-deleted Instagram post, the rapper shared a photo of Kylie along with the caption, Certain things catch your eye, but only few capture the heart. Kylie Jenner's lips have dominated pop culture discourse and even inspired some dangerous trends. According to Seventeen, some girls risked potential disfigurement by using suction to plump their pouts in 2015. But the real challenge was getting Kylie to admit she'd altered her mouth's appearance. Some tabloids consulted plastic surgeons who agreed that the youngest Kardashian Jenner sister had gotten lip injections. One doctor told Hollywood Life, That is not just lipstick. Her lips look three times as wide as they did in the before picture. In November 2014, the teen told E that she was tired of the conversation about her lips. She even shared some of her tricks for making them appear bigger, saying, "'My pictures, I pout them out a lot. I think big lips are awesome.'" It wasn't until May 2015 that Kylie finally owned up to the work she'd had done. During an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, the lip kit mogul said, "'I have temporary lip fillers. It's just an insecurity of mine, and it's what I wanted to do.'" In June 2017, TMZ reported that Kim Kardashian and Kanye West had agreed to pay a surrogate $45,000 to carry their third child. The publication noted that Kim's placenta accreta condition made it potentially deadly for the reality show star to attempt to deliver another baby herself. A month later, Us Weekly claimed that the surrogate was already pregnant and due to give birth in early 2018. However, Kim seemingly shot down the surrogacy rumors, telling The Hollywood Reporter in August 2017, there have been a lot of things said, and Kanye and I have not confirmed anything. We're definitely trying, we are hoping so. In September 2017, TMZ claimed to have obtained personal information about the rumored surrogate, from her race to her marital status to her political affiliation. The same month, Kim confirmed that she was going to be a third-time mom during a Keeping Up With The Kardashians promo, but made no mention of surrogacy. 
Do you not know we're having another baby? It wasn't until Baby Chicago West arrived in January 2018 that Kim's website finally confirmed, We are incredibly grateful to our surrogate who made our dreams come true with the greatest gift one could give. The first time was so scary. I did a FaceTime first, and then I invited him over for dinner with her two kids. In April 2017, People reported that Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott had been spotted together at Coachella. Although their romance seemed relatively new, it didn't take long for pregnancy rumors to start. In August 2017, OK! reported that Kylie was already four months along. A source mysteriously told the publication, We all think she's staying out of the spotlight until she's ready to share her news. By September, TMZ and People reported that the couple was telling everyone close to them that they were expecting a baby girl. One insider spilled to People, It is an unexpected but completely amazing turn of events that Kylie could not be more excited or thrilled about. Kylie finally confirmed her pregnancy in February 2018 after she had given birth, writing on Instagram, I'm sorry for keeping you in the dark through all the assumptions. I knew my baby would feel every stress and every emotion, so I chose to do it this way for my little life and our happiness. In February 2019, Hollywood Unlocked CEO Jason Lee broke a big story on the gossip site's Instagram account. According to Lee, one of his contributors claimed to have seen Kylie Jenner's close friend Jordan Woods canoodling with Khloe Kardashian's beau, Tristan Thompson, and sitting on his lap. The purported incident took place during a party at Thompson's home, where Woods allegedly stayed until 7 in the morning the following day. Meanwhile, TMZ alleged that Woods and Thompson had kissed. Thompson seemingly responded to the claims by tweeting, fake news, but he later deleted the denial. Sorry. Liar! In a March 2019 appearance on Red Table Talk, Woods disputed claims that she and Thompson were all over each other. According to her version of events, she sat next to Thompson with her legs underneath his, not in his lap, and he surprised her with a chaste, tongue-free kiss as she was walking out the door. However, in an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Chloe revealed that Thompson's account of the night matched some of the original reports, as she recalled. They were all over each other. They were handsy. They made out. Kourtney Kardashian and Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker sparked romance rumors on more than one occasion before making it official. In March 2018, a source told Radar, Travis lives a couple of blocks from Court in the same gated community in Calabasas, and their kids play together. He's always had a bit of a thing for her. In March 2019, Barker shut down romance rumors, telling people that his relationship with Courtney was purely platonic. That all changed in January 2021 when Courtney shared a screenshot from the movie True Romance. In his memoir, Can I Say, Living Large, Cheating Death, and Drums, 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 Barker revealed that he adores True Romance so much that he named one of his daughters Alabama after the main character. Onlookers were sure something was going on when Barker responded to Courtney's post with a quote from the film, commenting, You're so cool. Days later, the U.S. Sun got the inside scoop from a friend who said, They talk almost every day, and everyone around them is desperate for them to get together. A month later, Courtney finally confirmed the romance on Instagram. We fell in love, and now he's my boyfriend. Khloe Kardashian has always been dogged by speculation over whether she's had any work done. In November 2020, fans suggested that the reality star had finally gone under the knife when she shared a video on Twitter. One user wrote, Why does she look so different here? Nose job? Her chin? Oh no, Khloe was always the most incredible looking. Another fan tweeted, It looks like her nose is disappearing. In a July 2019 video for Vogue, Khloe demonstrated how she uses contouring to alter the appearance of her nose. While the trick can be extremely effective, she confessed that her makeup artistry sometimes makes the centerpiece of her face look a bit strange on camera. However, not everyone was convinced by this explanation. In November 2020, one plastic surgeon told Insider, The amount of decrease in width of the tip suggests to me a rhinoplasty procedure. During the Keeping Up with the Kardashian reunion special in June 2021, Chloe finally came clean and revealed that she had indeed had a nose job. In July 2020, sources told Us Weekly that Kim Kardashian was consulting with divorce attorneys after Kanye West raged against her family during one of his Twitter tirades. In a post on her Instagram story, Kim reminded her fans that Ye has bipolar disorder, writing, Those who are close with Kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes do not align with his intentions. By January 2021, Page Six was reporting that The Skims founder was ready to pull the plug on her seven-year marriage, with an insider claiming, Kim has hired Laura Wasser and they are in settlement talks. Meanwhile, Us Weekly reported that the pair was no longer living together, with a source saying, Kanye isn't as focused and doesn't live in the real world. Their worldviews no longer line up. In February 2021, Kim's rep finally confirmed that the divorce rumors were true for The New York Times. Speaking to Vogue about the split, Kim said, I've chosen myself. I think it's okay to choose you. 
After Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson were spotted celebrating the spooky season together at Not Scary Farm in October 2021, a source told People that they were just friends. The following month, a source told Page Six, she is intrigued, she likes him. E! reported that the reality icon decided to make her relationship with Davidson exclusive in November 2021, with a source saying, she's trying to not make a big deal about it, but is super into him. Kim finally made the romance Instagram official in March 2022. In April 2022, the Daily Mail published photos of Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson outside Ripley's Believe It or Not in Orlando. Some Redditors believed that the couple wasn't just there to check out the museum's curiosities, and instead guessed that Kim was shopping for a Met Gala dress. It was pointed out that one of the exhibits inside the museum was the glittering gown Marilyn Monroe wore when she famously serenaded John F. Kennedy Jr. with a sultry rendition of Happy Birthday. One Redditor even predicted, if Kim ends up wearing it, it'll be possibly her biggest scandal of all time. The Redditors were right, and during an episode of The Kardashians, viewers saw Kim struggling to squeeze into Monroe's iconic dress for her final fitting. Kim's longtime hairstylist, Chris Appleton, came to the rescue in her time of need, with the mother of four revealing, he lifted up my butt in my skims, repositioned my shapewear, and then it went up. However, the back of the dress wouldn't zip all the way up, so she had to cover the gap with a fur coat on the red carpet. The man who originally sketched the gown, Bob Mackey, was among those who thought Kim didn't exactly honor her idol's memory by borrowing the famous frock. Mackey told Entertainment Weekly, It was designed for Marilyn Monroe. Nobody else should be seen in that dress. Khloe Kardashian's marriage to Lamar Odom had enough drama for one lifetime. But for this superstar family member, it's just one part in a long string of bad times. Where do we even start with this one? Sadly for Khloe Kardashian, Tristan Thompson's cheating isn't exactly a secret, as the basketball star has repeatedly faced rumors of infidelity throughout their romance. The first round of cheating allegations happened in April 2018, while Khloe was pregnant with their daughter. The Daily Mail released a video that appeared to show him locking lips with a mystery woman. Then, The Shade Room came in with a double whammy when they published footage of someone who looked a lot like Thompson entering a hotel with someone who looked a lot like that mystery woman. All this happened mere days before Chloe gave birth. And if that wasn't bad enough, that same month, TMZ dropped a clip allegedly taken in October 2017 that showed Thompson kissing a woman in a club while also getting cozy with two others. Understandably, a source told Entertainment Tonight that Chloe was, quote, completely devastated. But that wasn't the end of Thompson's cheating ways. Though the two reconciled, in February 2019, he was accused of being unfaithful yet again. When Hollywood Unlocked reported he got, quote, cozy with Kardashian family friend Jordan Woods. And, well, you know how that went down. He said he didn't kiss her. Liar! We're sadly still not done, though. The pair reconciled again, but in April 2021, he was accused of hooking up with model Sydney Chase, which he denied. December 2021 brought the bombshell allegation that he had cheated with a personal trainer who allegedly had his baby. Khloe Kardashian is a proud mom to True, but she had a long road to motherhood and has struggled with providing True a sibling. In a March 2021 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Khloe could be seen talking to her sister, Kim Kardashian, about surrogacy, as Kim has also shared her own fertility issues. Khloe explained that her doctor told her she would be a high-risk carrier for a pregnancy and had around an 80% chance of miscarrying her second child. She heartbreakingly shared how she almost experienced a miscarriage early in her pregnancy with True. Chloe also got candid about becoming a mom again on Lady Parts that same month, sharing that she had undergone in vitro fertilization, quote, around three times. She also revealed that she had frozen her eggs and made embryos with her then-boyfriend, Tristan Thompson. She added she was grateful to have made the embryos to prevent her from having to undergo IVF again, as she'd, quote, realized her eggs aren't strong enough to be frozen. Season 20 of Keeping Up with the Kardashians delved deeper into the star's fertility journey and saw Chloe and Thompson go the surrogacy route. But during the second part of the show's big reunion, which was filmed in April 2021 but aired in June 2021, Chloe shared that their plans for a surrogate ended up falling through. 
Khloe Kardashian's eternal struggle with self-acceptance and body image has been well documented, and Khloe has opened up about trying to accept her looks after fighting for a leaked bikini photo to be deleted. The reality star got candid about her years of insecurities in a touching April 2021 Instagram post while showing off her body, describing herself as, quote, someone who has struggled with body image her whole life. She added, the pressure, constant ridicule, and judgment has been too much to bear. Every single flaw and imperfection has been microanalyzed and made fun of to the smallest detail, and I am reminded of them every day by the world. Chloe further touched on her self-esteem issues during the Keeping Up with the Kardashians reunion, sharing she believed being on the show affected her perception of herself. I think that's when I started to become hard on myself because I was like, oh, this is how other people perceive me, but my whole life, I never looked at myself like that. Chloe's struggle with her body has also been captured by the cameras, including during a 2011 episode of Chloe and Lamar, where Chloe had an emotional breakdown in front of her then husband, Lamar Odom. But I'm so fat. She also shared what was going through her mind. I'm so tired of trying to pretend that I'm happy with my weight just to be a good role model when I'm so disgusting. The death of a parent is sure to have a profound impact on pretty much anyone, and Khloe Kardashian is no exception. The star was just 19 years old when her dad, Robert Kardashian, died of cancer, and has revealed that his death took such a toll on her that she almost ended up in rehab. She wrote in her 2015 book, Strong Looks Better Naked, When I saw my father in his casket, I completely fell apart. I was an emotional wreck, and I'm told that I was so distraught I actually passed out. At one point, I fell to the floor kicking and screaming, and I had to be sedated. It was really intense. I refused to believe my father was gone. I just wanted to believe it was all just a bad dream. That's when the partying started. She added it got, quote, out of control. Chloe credited her sister Kourtney Kardashian for helping to bring her out of that downward spiral. Robert's death has continued to affect Chloe, as she opened up about her regrets during an episode of Cocktails with Chloe, saying, I was 19. I didn't realize. I knew he was dying, but I didn't take advantage of that time. I think now, just seizing the day and every minute you have with someone, that's a blessing. Another sad death Khloe Kardashian has had to deal with came after her beloved 14-year-old pooch, Gabbana, passed away. The star confirmed the tragic news in an Instagram post back in January 2018, when she shared several photos of herself and Gabbana over the years, including a black and white shot of herself giving the adorable Labrador a hug. She confirmed in the caption that, quote, Sweet Gabbana had died the night before, and explained to her millions of followers how her four-legged best friend was more than a pet to her. Chloe explained that she thought of Gabbana as her first child, her companion, and her friend, who would always ensure she had company in her loneliest moments. She added, I never thought I would be this devastated over losing a dog, but 14 years is a long time together. She filled a significant role in my life, and I'm forever grateful. Making things even more emotional for the reality star, Chloe was actually pregnant at the time. The star was expecting her first child, who we now know to be little true, with Tristan Thompson, and had only announced her pregnancy via Instagram the month prior. A long source of drama in Khloe Kardashian's life was her marriage to Lamar Odom. It was a relationship which you could say had many ups and downs. The two enjoyed a whirlwind romance when they got together in 2009, marrying mere weeks after meeting. But the fairy tale didn't last long. In 2014, Khloe admitted she'd lied to protect Lamar, claiming he'd been unfaithful. During a July 2014 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, she spilled what she had done on her previous birthday. I lied to everyone because I had to lie and say I was with my husband when in fact my husband was missing with another girl. During the relationship, she said that she was often alone and lied to everyone to maintain the image of happiness. But the cheating rumors were far from the only difficulty she faced with Odom. The basketballer also had brushes with the law during their relationship, including being arrested for a DUI in 2013. 
He also had traumatic health issues, being hospitalized for a drug overdose in 2015. Despite Chloe having filed for divorce at that point, she put the proceedings on hold and stood by Odom's side for months after initially being wrongly informed that he had died. During the Keeping Up with the Kardashians 10th anniversary special in 2017, Chloe recalled screaming when she heard the false alarm and called the misinformation the most traumatic thing. Despite having his back through the many low points of their life together, the relationship eventually reached its end, with Odom confirming in May 2021 that he and Chloe were no longer speaking. Khloe Kardashian has been pretty vocal about being the victim of bullying throughout her life, including sharing the harrowing story of how she was targeted at school. Chloe explained to Life & Style back in October 2010 that she was called fat and ugly by her classmates so much that she started to believe it about herself. She said, "...those words are played on repeat inside your head." But Chloe's not out for revenge, she explained. When people are bullies, it's because of a deeper-rooted issue. Either their family life is tough, or they're being bullied by someone bigger than they are. Revenge is not what I ever wanted. Chloe shared on Role Model with Leomi Anderson in July 2021 that she actually forged her parents' names on documents so she could move schools. Explaining her decision, she said, "...it wasn't my thing. I kept getting questioned if I was really related to my sisters because I look so differently. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel safe there. I didn't connect." Chloe has since used her experiences to try and teach people that their words have power. Khloe Kardashian has had some health issues over the years, including a double brush with COVID-19. Khloe's initial COVID diagnosis was filmed herself for keeping up with the Kardashians after the show went down to skeleton crew for safety reasons. Khloe was very vocal about how hard the virus affected her and how tough it was to have to stay away from her family, including her daughter True. Chloe explained that she experienced vomiting, coughing, shaking, and drastic changes in temperature, as well as bad headaches, while Kim Kardashian confirmed her sister had been quite sick with the virus. Speaking about the incident on The Ellen DeGeneres Show in October 2020, Chloe said she found the whole thing super scary. But the hardest part, she said, was not being able to see True while quarantining. She said, being taken away from your child for that long, because I couldn't be around my daughter, that was the most, like, heart-wrenching thing. Adding to that heartbreak, Chloe was diagnosed with COVID again a year later, and so was True. As Chloe was vaccinated, she explained in a tweet she wasn't expecting her second bout to be as bad, but announced she was canceling a slew of work commitments. She later followed up on Instagram, writing she was, quote, "...so over this." In a little-known fact about the Kardashian clan, Khloe Kardashian experienced a traumatic car accident in 2001 that has affected her long-term. Khloe opened up about the accident in a post on her now-defunct website. According to People, she stated the crash left her with injured knees that required reconstructive surgery, which caused her right leg to be an inch and a half thinner than her left leg due to muscle deterioration. Chloe said she was speeding and another car ran the stop sign, crashing into her and crushing her Mercedes upon impact. Describing the event, she said, "...I was wearing my seatbelt, but the strap was under my armpit. My head and upper body went through the windshield, and my legs were stuck under the steering wheel." She mentioned she also had to wear a neck brace and had burns all over her body. The injuries required her to shower while sitting down and bring in friends to help wash her hair. Chloe has also battled migraines throughout her life, which she believes were escalated by the accident. Now, she says that she sometimes has bad headaches for days at a time. Her migraines started around the time she was in middle school, with the star recalling to Prevention in July 2020, "...I would not be able to lift my head up. And being that young, it was scary." She may be the face of one of the biggest reality TV empires in the world, but Kim Kardashian's real life portrays a much different story than her Instagram feed. Despite her multiple retail lines and mega-influencer status, this reality star has certainly suffered her share of devastating tragedies. Here's how she's handled the tough times that came her way. Just wish me luck. Just wish me luck. Kim's parents, Chris and attorney Robert Kardashian, 
were happily married for 12 years until Chris had an affair and Robert then filed for divorce in 1991. Chris told Oprah in 2012, I think I have one regret, and that was getting divorced. I thought I knew it all. I was young and you know, you think you're smarter than everybody else. And I had been with Robert since I was 17 years old. In an interview for Objectified six years later, Chris revealed that she engaged in the affair because although her life was perfect, she had still adopted a grass is always greener mentality. She was also remorseful about how the situation affected her kids, especially Courtney and Kim, who knew the real reason why their parents split up. Kim told Oprah, We always protected our dad because we felt bad for him because he didn't want the divorce. We knew it was my mom's fault. We were really well aware. As she's gotten older, Kim says that she's grown to understand her mom's side of the story. She admitted, I've been in those situations where I feel like I want to get out. I can't breathe. Adding more fuel to the fire, Robert Kardashian went on to represent his longtime friend, O.J. Simpson, in Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman's murder case. Nicole had been one of Chris's best friends, and Chris faithfully stood by the prosecution. She later recalled on a Hollywood Reporter podcast, After that initial shock of, what's going on? I just felt like I knew probably what had happened. The Kardashian kids called Simpson and Brown, Uncle OJ, and Auntie Nicole. They were even Kim and Courtney's godparents. But Chris and Robert Sr.'s opposite positions made things even more stressful on the family. Chris told Oprah, There was a line drawn in the sand. There was a lot of tension, and the kids probably suffered as a result of it. So we didn't really know what to believe or whose side to take as kids because we didn't want to hurt one of our parents' feelings. Simpson was infamously acquitted of Brown and Goldman's murders. Even today, Kim usually takes a cue from her mom and doesn't speak about OJ, out of respect for his kids. But in 2019, she recalled the last time she saw him, telling the Food God podcast, We all, I think, all started crying, and it was emotional. Robert Kardashian died suddenly from throat cancer on October 3, 2003. He was 59 years old, and he had learned of his diagnosis only eight weeks prior to his death, according to the New York Times. Kim remembered her dad in a 2019 Instagram post, writing, Miss you, Dad. Can't believe today would be 16 years since you went to heaven. Every moment of our lives, he would, you know, videotape us as kids, and he was narrating all of that. Let's see, can you girls speak Armenian? But Robert's legacy lives on in Kim's life today. She told Vogue in 2019 that he is a part of the reason she began studying to become a lawyer. She recalled, My dad had a library, and when you pushed on this wall, there was this whole hidden closet room with all of his OJ evidence books. On weekends, I would always snoop and look through them. I was really nosy about the forensics. 2007 was a banner year for the Kardashian family. But it's not just because it was then that Keeping Up With The Kardashians hit the air. Months before the show debuted, an intimate tape featuring Kim and her then-boyfriend Ray J leaked online. There were theories that the scandal was a publicity stunt ahead of the show that premiered just eight months later. But momager Chris told The Hollywood Reporter, It was one of the most horrific things that we as a family went through. Kim apparently feels the same. She revealed to Oprah in 2012 that while she's well aware that the tape is how she was first introduced to fans, she has since hustled to prove who she really is and to overcome that original public image. She claimed, I felt humiliated. I've always been concerned about the family, humiliating the family, and that's what I did. And that's something that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. If I had one regret, the tape would be it. So I felt like I really had to work 10 times harder to get people to see the real me. Kim later confessed on Keeping Up With The Kardashians that she was high on ecstasy at the time the tape was made. Kardashian has been in several high-profile relationships, but none of her breakups got quite as much attention as her split from former NBA star Chris Humphreys. The couple divorced after just 72 days of marriage. I feel sad. I feel bad for the guy. I changed his whole life and he fell in love with me and I fell in love with him and now my feelings have changed. Kim met Humphreys in 2010, and the couple was engaged by May of 2011. They were married 90 days later in a special event, Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding, which aired on E! in October of that year. The special drew about 4 million viewers over two nights, according to Us Weekly, and the broadcast banked the couple a total of $17.9 million, with filming and photo deals considered per MTV. But the duo's wedded bliss lasted no more than a total of 72 days, or even less time if you believe the bride. Kim revealed on Watch What Happens Live, But I knew, like, honeymoon it wasn't gonna work out. Kim ultimately filed for divorce on Halloween of 2011. She also admitted to Andy Cohen that she rushed into marriage with Humphreys because she was feeling pressure to settle down. She said, I think a lot of girls do go through that, thinking they're getting old and they have to figure it out. Perhaps the most terrifying moment of Kardashian's life happened in Paris in 2016, when she was robbed at gunpoint in her hotel room and tied up by a gang of men dressed in police uniforms and masks, according to the Daily Mail. The thieves reportedly stole an estimated $5.6 million in jewels, including Kim's engagement ring. 
At the time, Kim, her mom, and sister Courtney were visiting Paris for Fashion Week. I knew something wasn't quite right. Kim detailed the incident, saying that it ultimately changed the way she values material possessions. But she revealed the true terror of the experience, telling The Ellen DeGeneres Show, I knew that was it for me, 100%. I said a prayer, I'm like, I know I'm going to heaven. I hope my kids are okay, my husband. I know this sounds crazy, but I know that was meant to happen to me. The Daily Mail reported that 17 total suspects were arrested in connection with the incident in 2017. And Kanye, how did you know that Kim was the one? Uh, I saw on a paparazzi pic with Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> By 2012, Kim was officially linked to Kanye West, and the rapper confirmed that Kim was pregnant with their first child in December of that year. The two are now married with four children, North, Saint, Chicago, and Psalm. But their journey toward growing their family hasn't been an easy one. Kim gave birth to her eldest children, but the youngest two arrived through a surrogate. I want my kids to have siblings, and I want to know that I did everything that I could to make this happen. Kim has been open about the life-threatening conditions she experienced during her first pregnancy. In a 2019 Instagram post, she revealed that she had preeclampsia and had gone into, quote, emergency labor to deliver North nearly six weeks early. Saint was conceived via IVF, but Kim explained that she was later forced to undergo multiple surgeries to repair damage that her pregnancies did to her body. But no matter how she welcomed her children, she's clearly a devoted mom to each of them. She said, I am just so thankful for my beautiful kids. The Kardashian-Jenner sisters have built an empire off of their curves, but since they are celebrities and post frequently on Instagram, body shaming from random internet trolls appears to be an unfortunate part of the job. But shaming from other famous faces seems to have been an issue as well. Former President Trump took a jab at Kardashian's looks on The Howard Stern Show in 2013, and she's publicly clapped back at model Tyson Beckford for making inappropriate comments about her body. But Kim revealed that it was the media who really crossed the line by fat shaming her during and after her pregnancies. There's maybe two or three covers this week that say I am 200 pounds and I'm like, you are like 60 pounds <laughs> off here. She told C Magazine, it was the worst. Before, I was always smiling and so into being out and about. After I had the baby, I was like, these are the same people that made fun of me and posted the stories that were so awful, calling me fat for something I couldn't control. I don't want to smile for them. In the wake of Kanye's bipolar diagnosis, Kim has spoken out about the stress it's brought upon her entire family. And after Kanye's public breakdown on Twitter as he holds up at a Wyoming ranch, Kim opened up in an Instagram story in July 2020, writing, "...anyone who has bipolar disorder or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand." What is he like? This is, like, serious. She also explained how the coronavirus pandemic had affected her husband, revealing that the extra stress and isolation only seemed to amplify his symptoms. She added, "...those who are close with Kanye know his heart, and understand his words sometimes do not align with his intentions." Back in 2019, Kim opened up about how they managed the disorder, telling Vogue, "...for Kanye, being on medication is not really an option, because it just changes who he is. I never want to speak for him because I am not in his mind. If it comes to him being in the middle of a bipolar episode, I'll do everything to be supportive and help to calm the situation." For a couple with the star power of Kim and Kanye, divorce rumors blowing up the tabloids are just part of the territory. But buzz intensified in 2016 after Kardashian's Paris incident, when West was hospitalized for exhaustion. At the time, a source alleged to Us Weekly, it will take some time before Kim can do anything, but she doesn't want to stay married. Kanye can come in and take some with me, but I definitely want solos. In January 2021, Page Six reported that, for the couple, quote, divorce is imminent. The pair had reportedly been living separate lives and focusing on personal projects. Kardashian lived in Calabasas, California with the kids, and Wes was spending his time in Wyoming. A source told the outlet that Kim had even hired a divorce attorney. As for the last straw in the marriage, a source claimed, Kim is serious about taking the bar exam and becoming a lawyer. She is serious about her prison reform campaign. Meanwhile, another source alleged that West was apparently done with the entire Kardashian family. Family. TMZ reported that the couple has most recently sought counseling, and as of early 2021, Kim has yet to file for divorce. A lot has been said about the Kardashian-Jenner clan, but no one can deny that they all care about each other very much. Considering how much family means to Kim in particular, it's not exactly surprising that she revealed on Live with Kelly and Ryan that the hardest thing she ever filmed was the one thing that impacted them the most. Kayla Marie Jenner. Oh, Marie. And it says that on your driver's license? Yeah. Yeah with uh, gender marker F. Kim explained, 
As far as the most difficult thing that we've ever dealt with or filmed, it was probably Caitlyn Jenner's transition, just because we had no idea if people were going to accept her. And that was the hardest thing, seeing that someone might go through a lot of pain, and you can't do anything to protect that person. Seacrest called Kim the quote diplomat of the Kardashian family, noting that just about everyone went to her to sort out their feelings during that time. But in the wake of Caitlyn's scathing 2017 memoir, The Secrets of My Life, Kim noted a brutally painful division between Chris and Caitlyn. She's so angry at mom, like for no reason. While the family has publicly rallied around Caitlyn in support of her new chapter as her true self, the reality of what has been lost and the growing pains that have touched them all still appear to be a bitter pill to swallow. At the end of the day, we're all family, and I'm not going to say, you know, anything. I'm just going to try to be super positive and, and hope that it all resolves itself. Kim Kardashian may be a household name today, but where would she be without her childhood BFF, Paris Hilton? When it comes to the famous for being famous lifestyle, Hilton was the real paparazzi pioneer. Did Kardashian see it the same way? Keep watching for every twist and turn in this pair's lifelong friendship. When we say that Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton go way back, we mean way back. The pair first met in preschool, so their decades-long friendship started when they were small. Both girls grew up in Los Angeles and had childhoods that were mostly sheltered and uneventful. Well, moving to New York at 15, I was very young and I was very sheltered living in Los Angeles. I'd never been to a party. Kardashian grew up in Beverly Hills with her mother Kris Jenner and her father Robert Kardashian. Their home was obviously a deeply significant place for the whole family because, in October 2020, Kim rented it for the day to celebrate her mom's birthday. She revealed on Instagram, I rented our childhood home. All of our memories live here, especially with our dad. It's where each Kardashian child was born and made us who we are. This was the most special, nostalgic day of my life and we felt my dad's presence enjoying this day with us. Both women had no way of knowing what was in store for them, and the level of stardom they've had since is a long way from the sheltered childhoods they both had in California. We've been friends since we're like two years old. While they knew each other as kids, Kim Kardashian's relationship with Paris Hilton was first publicly documented on Hilton's reality show, The Simple Life. The show followed Hilton and Nicole Richie as they lived without the luxuries of their Beverly Hills homes. It was through this show that the world first met Kardashian, and it gave her the chance to try out reality TV. Kardashian was often seen working in Hilton's closet on The Simple Life. As a result, people often dubbed Kardashian as Hilton's personal assistant in the early days. However, Kardashian clarified what her role was in an interview with Recode in 2014, saying, I was not her assistant, but I had an eBay closet organizing company and she was one of my clients. Go to my clients' homes and I help them clean out their closets. Interestingly, sister Khloe Kardashian followed a similar path. On the podcast Emergency Contact in October 2020, Khloe explained, I was Nicole Richie's assistant. I went to school with her. She was one of my best friends growing up, and so we were really, really close. Obviously, for both Kardashian sisters, these early jobs led to big things. Of all the things to have in common, Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton both know what it's like to have intimate videos leaked. Understandably, the experience was violating for both women. It was like being electronically raped. Hilton's ex, Rick Solomon, leaked their tape in 2004, after recording the video in 2001. Hilton spoke about the harrowing experience on Vanity Fair's podcast, Inside the Hive, saying, That will always be something that will hurt me for the rest of my life. People were so mean about it to me. The way that I was spoken about on nightly talk shows and the media, I would be in tears every single day. I didn't want to leave my house, didn't want to show my face. I felt like my life was over just felt so betrayed. This is not some random guy. This was someone I was with for a few years. Kardashian's tape with Ray J leaked in 2007. Addressing accusations that she used it to make money or to get famous, Kardashian told Harper's Bazaar in 2011, I never made a business off of the tape. I made a business off my family and our TV show. Before the tape came out, we were in the works to do our TV show, but people don't know that. I wasn't hanging out with Paris on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. At the time hers came out, it mm -hmm. was after. Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton's friendship reached a new level in 2006, when the two women were photographed going out together. Hilton knew the game thanks to her teenage years in New York City with her sister, Nikki Hilton. And became the Hilton sisters right. and started this whole phenomenon and basically 
created a new celebrity genre. Kardashian understood that there was a strategy to getting publicity. As she told Rolling Stone of her friendship with Hilton, we knew exactly where to go, where to be seen, how to have something written about you. All you had to do is go to this restaurant or this party, talk about whatever you want to talk about, and it would be in the paper the next day. Hilton's manager from that era, Jason Moore, told ABC, ultimately, the goal was to have people say Paris and they thought of her and not the city. So how could I make somebody's brain start thinking of her? The two became famous before the rise of social media, but they seemed to know how to manage stardom. Media strategist Shiraz Hassan told ABC, When you look at someone like Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton, you have people who understand the game of paparazzi. But the partying was also a blast, as Kardashian told Harper's Bazaar. We had so much fun. I had never traveled the world like that. It was so neat, all the things we did. I think I learned a lot from her. Things took a rocky turn for Paris Hilton in September 2006. She was arrested after leaving In-N-Out Burger on suspicion of a DUI. In January 2007, Paris was sentenced to three years probation for reckless driving, and she also had to pay a $1,500 fine and attend classes regarding alcohol education. However, in February 2007, Hilton was pulled over for speeding and problems arose when it became apparent that she was driving with a suspended license. As a result, the socialite received a 45-day jail sentence at the Century Regional Detention Facility in the city of Linwood in Los Angeles County. In response to the news, Kim Kardashian offered her support to Hilton. When praised by Hollywood TV for standing by her friend, she responded with ease, saying, Of course, you have to support people that you love. But their friendship seemingly cooled at this point. In her post-jail interview with Larry King on CNN, Hilton cryptically said, I've gotten rid of a lot of people. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but they know who they are. In the midst of all of this, Kardashian's sex tape got leaked and it seemed like the perfect chance to get some guidance from Hilton. But this didn't happen. The Skims founder told Rolling Stone, Stone, we didn't really talk about it. I probably would have thought, oh my gosh, let me give her advice. But we had no communication. But our friendship had fizzled before that. While Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton were on the outs, a lot was happening in Kardashian's world. The first episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians aired on October 14, 2007. Kim was 27 when the show came out, with Kris Jenner and Ryan Seacrest strategizing the show's premise. Jenner and Seacrest were heavily influenced by the success of MTV's reality show The Osbournes. It would seem that Hilton was the guide for how to get paparazzi attention, while the Osbourne family inspired the Kardashians' incredible popular reality show. Unfortunately, there was already trouble in paradise for Hilton and Kardashian. According to In Touch, in 2008, Hilton responded to Kardashian's growing fame and her famous butt by saying, It's disgusting. It reminds me of cottage cheese inside of a big trash bag. Later, Hilton contacted In Touch to say that she was sorry, explaining, I was just joking around and I made a stupid joke. I felt really bad afterward, so I contacted Kim and apologized. It was a silly thing to to say. Kim's hot. Kardashian accepted the apology graciously, and according to TMZ, she responded by saying, Paris and I have been friends since we were kids, and I'm glad she made the effort to say she's sorry. At this point, Kardashian was already well on her way to surpass Hilton as the ultimate it girl. As Kim Kardashian's career was blowing up, she and Paris Hilton went completely silent. Kardashian told Harper's Bazaar in 2011, We don't really talk. As I always say, everyone comes into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And she was in my life for a long time. Kardashian added, There comes a point in life where you just grow apart, and you realize you're not as similar as you thought. And I never run into her anywhere. Isn't that so weird? For two friends who were tied at the hip, it was a shocking change. But Kardashian was spending more time with her family, and in this era, paparazzi photos usually featured her with her sisters. Culturally, Kardashian was dominating Hilton. As Screen Rant reported, by October 2007, Kardashian's name was more searched on Google than Hilton's, and it has remained this way ever since. Tabloids were still hard on Kardashian, but she managed to stay away from the kind of press that plagued Hilton, like DUIs and jail time. As she told Rolling Stone, I was never drinking. I think that saved me a lot. Hilton was still in the lead financially for several years, though. Forbes pointed out that even in 2015, Hilton still had the higher net worth, thanks to product endorsements and her fragrance line. Eventually, though, Kardashian would go on to dominate in that arena as well. 
Between Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian, who gets to take credit for originating the selfie? There seems to be a little rivalry between the two reality stars for making popular the most ubiquitous photo style on social media. Speaking to W, Hilton staked her claim, saying, If a beeper had a camera, I would have taken a selfie with it. I think I have a selfie from when I was a little kid, like on a disposable camera. The New York Times pushed back against this, however, saying that other celebs like Madonna had already pioneered the selfie. But when it comes to Hilton or Kardashian, it might be fair to say that Hilton walked so that Kardashian could run. After all, Kardashian literally published a book of selfie photography called Selfish in 2015. Now, Kardashian is so invested in that style of photography that she's offered endless advice over the years. She told E, There's nothing worse than a really bad selfie angle. I went to a restaurant the other day and everyone was asking for a photo, but their angles were so bad. I just had to start taking their cameras and doing it myself so I could get the right angle. Happily, Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton decided to reconcile, and the rest of the world found out through social media, of course. On August 3, 2014, Kardashian posted a photo on Instagram of the two of them laughing, and her caption revealed, Reminiscing about the first time we went to Ibiza in 2006. Paris Hilton, it was so good to see you and catch up. For Hilton's birthday in 2015, Kardashian posted another Ibiza throwback with the caption, Found this pic while unpacking. It's from 2006 in Ibiza. Happy belated birthday, Paris Hilton. Hilton jumped on Twitter in 2017 to post more Ibiza throwback photos. The cheerful back and forth between the two reality stars made it clear to everyone else that the friendship had finally been patched up. At the end of the day, life is about being happy. One thing that Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton have in common is their drive. Kardashian told Recode in 2014, I pride myself on my work ethic. I work really hard. I think that sometimes when people hear that I might have gotten success off of a reality show, they take that as a negative. Hilton had a similar message about her own ambition and the negative stigmas she's constantly combating. As she explained to Glamour in 2015, People don't know about my work ethic. They think I'm just a trust fund kid, but I'm down to earth and I've worked hard for everything. I had a certain persona on The Simple Life, but I was young and a lot of that was tongue-in-cheek. I'm not just a dumb blonde. I wouldn't have got this far if I was. Both Kardashian and Hilton have created brands while working in reality TV, and they both came from well-off families. As a result, they have had to fight against a certain cultural assumption that everything was handed to them. They've also faced speculation that their sex tapes were conveniently leaked to promote their shows. However, Hilton offered considerable praise for Kardashian on this topic, telling Glamour, She's always had a great work ethic like me, and she's always been determined, and that's what it's all about. I'm so proud of her. When she's at home, she's very normal, like anyone else, with a glamorous life. It was obvious that Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian were on great terms again when Hilton enlisted Kardashian to appear in a new music video. In fact, the song itself seems to be about Kardashian and is aptly titled Best Friend's Ass. Hilton created the single alongside Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike. The music video's setting is a club, offering a nice throwback to Hilton and Kardashian's early party days. The lyrics make it clear that the focus is on friendship and not men, which is a nice touch. Well, I definitely think it would be a crime to not have the most infamous ass in the world in this music video. Fans were all over the project and loved seeing the two friends united again. One fan commented on YouTube, Anything they do, I love to watch, especially on YouTube. I feel like I need more Paris in my life, though. Paris and Kim are beautiful, sexy, and smart. Others couldn't help but acknowledge a little rivalry, with one writing, 2000 when Paris was more popular, 2019 when Kim is the most popular. The real appeal of the music video was seeing Hilton and Kardashian together again. Kim Kardashian knows where credit is due, and she has spoken many times about how much Paris Hilton helped her career. On an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Kim spoke with sister Khloe Kardashian about appearing in Hilton's Best Friend's Ass music video. While on the topic, they spoke about Hilton and what she did to help the Kardashian family. Kim joked that her only rule was that she didn't want to dance in the video, but besides that, she'd do anything for her friend. I really would want to do anything for her. She she literally gave me a career. Chloe praised Kim and pointed out that other people might be reluctant to hand credit to someone else for their success. Kim listed her wildly busy schedule and said, I would drop it for her because that's important such... to me to be loyal to people. 
In response to this humble acknowledgement, Hilton had only good things to say about her friend. On the red carpet, an interviewer from Entertainment Tonight asked Hilton how she felt about Kardashian, saying she was responsible for her success. Hilton had only praise for Kim and the rest of the Kardashian clan. I love her and I'm so proud of her and her whole family. They are just girl bosses killing it. Kardashian and Hilton have obviously moved past any rivalry. Sometimes it takes falling out of touch to realize how much a friendship means. As the years have gone by, Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton appear, by all accounts, to be better friends than they ever were. Some of this stability in the friendship could be due to the fact that they are both media moguls and have each built impressive empires. They're certainly on much more equal footing now than in the early days when Kardashian was working for Hilton. In 2018, Hilton adorably dressed up as Kardashian to promote Kanye West's looks for season six of his brand, Yeezy. Hilton even sported Kardashian's then frosty blonde hair. Kardashian was all over the dupe and posted photos of her BFF on Twitter, calling Hilton the OG. Hilton was obviously all about promoting Kardashian and West's brands. In October 2020, she shared a video to her YouTube channel of a shoot she did for Kardashian's clothing brand, Skims. It's gonna be an early 2000s vibe, so I'm excited to see all the looks. They sported velour tracksuits and even used flip phones as props, so it was a major throwback moment. Kardashian gave back in the video too by telling fans to watch Hilton's documentary, This is Paris. Now Hilton and Kardashian are using their platforms to build each other up. Paris Hilton married Carter Ream in Bel Air, California in November 2021. True to form, Kim Kardashian was a huge help to Hilton on the big day. An insider told E! Kim had a sweet pep talk with Paris and helped her with her dress. In a real nostalgic turn, Nicole Richie was also a guest. Another source told E! that Kardashian and Richie were visibly happy to reconnect and were spotted hugging. Meanwhile, Paris' sister Nikki Hilton revealed that Kardashian wanted to come away from the wedding with a specific souvenir. It's funny, at the wedding, Kim joked, I'm gonna catch that bouquet. And when Paris spoke on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, she seemed elated that her old friend had made it to her nuptials. And it meant so much to me that she was there. She looked stunning, and it was a fun night. When Kardashian split from Kanye West, Hilton was happy to see her friend find love with Pete Davidson. I'm so happy to see her happy. She just looks so beautiful and smiling, and I think they're just so cute together. Hilton even went on to gush about Davidson. Funny guys are awesome because they just always make you laugh and put you in a good mood. It's just good vibes. So it's really cute. Both friends have given each other blessings when it comes to their new romances. And both have seen it all, from navigating paparazzi, rising to fame, and building successful business empires. Haters expected them to fail, but Hilton and Kardashian have done nothing but deliver. From keeping up with pigs and schedules and keeping the drama and the salary low, the Kardashians give their assistants a full list of do's and don'ts to follow so they can keep up with their dramatic lives. The Kardashian Jenners are some of the most famous people on the planet, and to work for them is to get a peek behind an incredibly exclusive curtain. But if you can't respect the family's boundaries, then it may not be the gig for you. As Kris Jenner told the Huffington Post in 2018, we try to have people on our team who have our back, who we feel that we can really trust. It's about being discreet and being private. If somebody has something that's happening in your life at the moment, and it is a private thing, then somebody would need to have a lot of respect for that. Seems fair enough, no? Kylie Jenner's former assistant, Victoria Villaroel, has also said that discretion was a top priority from day one. Kylie Jenner to the foyer. Kylie Jenner to the foyer. I have a little surprise for you. As she revealed on the Kylie Jenner app, Kylie pretty much poured her heart out to her when they first started working together, saying, Kylie said, close the door. I want to tell you my deepest secrets. We just talked forever. I think that's when we bonded. As for how Villa Roel landed the job in the first place, the long and short of it, she simply clicked with the reality star. As she shared on a 2019 episode of the Girl Cult podcast, we just got along. I'm not a crazy person. I'm trustworthy. We just liked each other. Sleep? What's that? Anyone who wants to be a Kardashian assistant is going to need to keep up with the Kardashians. Literally. If you don't, things may get catty. 
It's ridiculous for you to just not do that for me as a favor because I've done so much for you. The famously career-driven Kris Jenner has said that her assistant would need to be ready to work constantly because her schedule never seems to slow down, telling the Huffington Post, "...it's really non-stop, 24-7 brainstorming and creativity, and just trying to get organized and really pack a lot into a day, being there non-stop with all engines blazing." She also revealed in a 2019 Push interview with Kourtney Kardashian that she wakes up at 4.30 a.m. every day and starts checking her emails pretty much the moment she opens her eyes. Working for one of Chris's children is no more lax when it comes to availability either. Kylie Jenner's former assistant, Victoria Villaruel, revealed the makeup mogul would reach out at all hours of the day when she was an employee, saying, She'll call me at 2 a.m. I will answer. I don't really have set hours. It's pretty much whenever duty calls. 9 to 6, you could come to me with ideas. 9 to 6, you're not even up until 11 o'clock. And it sounds like it doesn't matter exactly what you're doing for the famous family, 24-7 availability is preferred. Jessica DeFino told Vice in 2022 that when she was an assistant on the family's apps, she was apparently expected to work hard at all hours of the day to make sure everything ran smoothly, adding, "...days, nights, holidays, weekends, whenever and wherever I was needed." If there's one thing the Kardashian-Jenners already have enough of, it's drama. I bought her a career. It's just lame to not do me a favor. And as Kris Jenner has made abundantly clear, when looking for a new employee, she seeks out someone who knows how to stay out of all the fray and won't create any unnecessary trouble. When she partnered with Bumblebiz, the networking arm of the popular dating app, to hire a new assistant in 2018, she explained to the Huffington Post, "...listen, the reason that I went with Bumble is because it stands for some of the things that are important to me, and that I also personally stand by, which is kindness and respect and equality, both on and offline." And I think they're important qualities that I'm looking for in a personal assistant, just, you know, as a human being. It can sometimes happen in such close quarters coupled with so much pressure, though, as former Dash employee Stephanie de Souza admitted that competitiveness could bring the claws out. She told E! News in 2015 that Dash employees would often show what she described as cattiness and jealousy. The Kardashians need a well-rounded individual on their team, as being a Kardashian-Jenner assistant involves a little bit of everything. Victoria Villaruel revealed that when she began working for Kylie Jenner, her main role was more actually that of housekeeper, sharing in an interview on the Kylie Jenner app, "...I helped the house run. Like groceries, cars, everything just had to be perfect. You basically do scheduling, travel, events, or any appearance that she has, award shows, the stylists, booking all her appointments, and keeping her calendar up to date." Kim Kardashian's former assistant Stephanie Shepard has also said there's a lot of learning on the job. Roles constantly change depending on what's going on with the family, such as preparing to welcome a new baby. As Shepard recalled to Refinery29 in 2017, Shepard played a big role in helping Kim prior to daughter Northwest's birth, saying, "...I was doing her whole schedule, doing her laundry, booking travel, putting the stroller together, and all of these things." Khloe Kardashian found out she needed to be a jack-of-all-trades the hard way when she playfully took on the role of her mom's assistant during a season 18 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. From scanning documents to sampling all the office snacks, Chloe took on whatever Chris threw her way, quipping, "...I'll do it, with a smile and my little assistant shoes on." To borrow a line from the hit single by the Real Housewives of Atlanta alum Kim Zolciak Berman, "...don't be tardy for the party." Not when it comes to the Kardashians, at least. It turns out the family are no fans of employees who don't have good timekeeping skills, as love and hip-hop star Erica Mina has shared. Mina worked for the Kardashian sisters in their Miami Dash store before becoming a reality television star in her own right, and noted she butted heads with Khloe Kardashian over her punctuality, explaining to Vlad TV, "...I was late a few times and Khloe wasn't having it. I think Khloe took more offense to me being late and thought that since I was friends with Kourtney Kardashian, I was taking advantage of it, and that wasn't really the situation." The Kardashians have also spoken out about how much they hate lateness a few times before, including when Kim Kardashian told Interview in September 2022 that not being punctual is the thing that stresses her out more than anything else, confessing, "...I hate being late. That's the one thing where I'm just like, oh my god, I need my CBD pen. I'm freaking the f out." You should be used to that. If you are welcomed into the Kardashian-Jenner world, it sounds like the line between work life and personal life can get a bit blurry. 
Kim Kardashian's former personal assistant Stephanie Shepard told Refinery29 in 2017 that anyone working for the family will need to be sociable and ready to bond with, well, pretty much the whole squad, sharing, everyone who works for the Kardashian family is part of this little tribe. Assistants, makeup artists, housekeepers, security. We get each other Christmas presents. We take care of all the kids like they're our own kids. It's truly one big extended family. But don't think that the Kardashians will go easy on their employees just because they've grown close to them. What you did, you could do whatever. But when it affects like my family, me, then that's when like it's a problem. Former Dash employee Caroline Alienberg, who appeared on the Keeping Up with the Kardashians spinoff Dash Dolls, told E! News in 2015 that the family wasn't afraid to let them know if something they did was subpar, adding, You'll forget something and you won't even know it, but you'll get in trouble for it. Former assistant Stephanie Shepard has said that working with the Kardashians isn't necessarily always as fun and exciting as it may appear on TV. When she was still on Kim Kardashian's payroll, she had a lot of tedious behind-the-scenes work to tackle. Needless to say, there is quite a bit going on in the Kardashian-Jenner empire, and it takes a village to keep things running smoothly. I need to make sure you guys think my dress is cute. As Shepard explained to Refinery29, I think everyone thinks this job is super glamorous. And I can't lie, it is. But don't forget that with all of that glamour comes schlepping the bags and the suitcases and taking the fall when something goes wrong. But while a Kardashian assistant is likely to be found working on the logistics of the glamorous events behind the scenes, that doesn't mean you get to slack in the fashion department. Former Dash Doll stars Durrani Popol and Stephanie de Souza told E! News in 2015 that they were expected to maintain a presentable look while they worked at the sisters' Dash stores because they were faces of the glam brand. If you want to be part of the Kardashian-Jenner workforce, you're probably going to need to be comfortable with dogs, and even the odd pig. You don't have to name it Wilbur, I just named it that. A source told Radar Online in 2016 that the family's assistants are often required to take care of their animals, as well as their more standard everyday tasks, claiming, Every time anyone in the family gets a pet, the assistant has to take care of them. Walking dogs, changing kitty litter, potty training… It's a huge burden for the rest of the family, so the job falls on the assistant to do all the dirty work. The Kardashian-Jenner family has seen a lot of dogs over the years. Kylie Jenner's boyfriend Travis Scott couldn't even remember the names of her four dogs in a July 2018 GQ interview. But it's not just canines that Kardashian assistants should be able to take care of. As a source told E! News in 2012, Kim Kardashian ended up giving a kitten named Mercy to Khloe Kardashian's assistant, Sydney Hitchcock. Evidently, Kim realized she was allergic to the cat after receiving Mercy as a gift from then-husband Kanye West. Sadly, Mercy died shortly afterwards. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your f up and work. If you're working for the Kardashians or Jenners, you maybe shouldn't expect to be paid like one. Jessica DeFino, who was an assistant editor for Kardashian Jenner official apps, claimed to Vice in 2022 that her pay was apparently so paltry that there were times she couldn't afford gas, confessing, The wages were low and laughable in LA, especially considering my experience. She told the outlet that her salary was around $35,000 a year, even though she worked around the clock to make sure the reality star's apps met their needs. What's more, in 2017, there was a rumor that salary may have been one of the reasons Kim Kardashian parted ways professionally with Stephanie Shepard. An insider claimed to Life & Style, Shepard supposedly wanted another $20,000. Kim had been paying Shepard $65,000 a year. She'd been working for Kim for three years with no raise and knew it was time to ask. Shepard stopped working for Kim shortly after, with People's Insider claiming it was Kim's decision, but didn't clarify if salary played a part, adding, She was a good assistant, but when Stephanie wanted to transition into a larger role with Kim's brand and businesses, it just didn't work. Luckily, since leaving the company, Shepard has remained friends with Kim and Kourtney Kardashian. Whether you keep up with the Kardashians or totally tune them out, pretty much everyone knows that the famous family is rich and they're certainly not afraid to flaunt it. From swanky toilets to baby birthday balloons to Postmates, here are the most ridiculous things the Kardashians are spending their millions on. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry! My god, I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. In 
January 2020, Kim Kardashian took to social media to give fans a tour of her and Kanye West's kitchen, showing off everything from their multiple pantries to their frozen yogurt machine and fully stocked toppings bar. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of my fridge. But fans were particularly captivated when Kardashian revealed their five refrigerators. Each seemed to serve a different purpose, but one in particular was just plain ridiculous. Kardashian walked fans through their restaurant-style walk-in fridge, causing quite the stir on social media. Fans tweeted things like, Your fridge is bigger than my house. And you're telling us there's a supermarket in your house? The Daily Mail previously reported that the couple even own a sixth fridge that's covered in Swarovski crystals, clocking in at a whopping $1 million worth of kitchen appliances. I hear a little baby! Ever wonder how Kylie Jenner spends her millions? On her adorable daughter Stormy, of course. In April 2018, Jenna and Travis Scott's daughter was only a few months old, but was already repping high-end designers, specifically a Fendi stroller and a matching outfit for Mama to go with it. Strollers are already an expensive item for new parents, with the average cost clocking in at hundreds of dollars. But Jenna, who Forbes once called the quote, youngest self-made billionaire, unsurprisingly took that to a whole new level. Teen Vogue reported that the stroller cost Jenna a whopping $12,500, plus $1,100 for the coordinating mini dress. Kendall Jenner's 2020 house tour gave fans a peek inside her $8.5 million Los Angeles home. The tour was full of custom art, a 300-pound sink, and tons of designer clothes. At the time, the Daily Mail reported that some of the art pieces in Jenner's home could be worth upwards of $500,000 and possibly even more. I have always wanted a James Charles. It's actually called Scorpius, and I'm a Scorpio, so... But while Jenna may be a budding art collector, fans couldn't help but notice her giant gold bathtub. The Sun reported that Jenna dropped over $52,000 for the piece, but it sounds like she gets some good use out of it. She told Architectural Digest, I get a lot of love for my gold tub. I'd say at least three times a week I'm in this tub. It's my favorite ever. But bath time accessories aren't her only splurge. In 2016, Jenna blogged that she had purchased a $52,000 couch, adding, It's a large woven nest. It's all woven and a really groovy navy with purple shimmer. You gotta check out this bathroom. <laughs> Whoa. Kendall may be luxuriating in her gilded tub, but Kim and Kanye's flashy toilets might just be the most ridiculously expensive item of all time. In 2013, the Daily Mail reported that while redecorating their Bel Air mansion, the couple spent a whopping $750,000 on, quote, four gold-plated toilets. While this may seem like literally flushing money away, according to Celebrity Net Worth, these two are reportedly worth about $4 billion together. But despite the custom upgrades, in 2015, Forbes revealed that the couple had already listed their home for $20 million, noting, The paint barely dried before they had a change of heart. The couple then moved to an even bigger 16,000-square-foot home in Hidden Hills, California, just minutes away from momager Kris Jenner's latest digs. For Kim and Kanye's daughter Chicago's first birthday in January 2019, Kris Jenner gifted her granddaughter a $3,650 limited edition Louis Vuitton music box. Many people probably didn't know that Louis Vuitton even made music boxes, but the Kardashians seem like they'll buy just about anything with the designer logo on it. This is so fancy! Kim, of course, took to her Instagram stories to show off the gift, but fans were quick to react, with users commenting, does it need to be a Louis for a baby, though? Still, none of that has stopped the Car Jenner fam from continuing to spoil their little ones with nothing but the best. They may be the most hustling family in reality showbiz, but when they get some downtime, this gang goes all out. Whether they're renting private jets, private islands, or shopping till they drop, they spare no expense. And in August 2019, Radar Online reported that Kourtney Kardashian spent around $1 million on a trip to Europe with her three kids and some friends. While a couple of weeks of food, hotels, and airfare could definitely put travelers out a few thousand dollars, an insider dished the scoop on how Kourtney managed to spend much more, telling the outlet, Between the private air travel, security bills, five-star lodgings, and shopping splurge, Courts spent a fortune. 
I'm more like chill, and so are I you, think when you no, no, are you on crack? But Courtney did take a moment to publicly express her gratitude for being able to fund the experience, posting. Feeling overwhelmingly grateful for the past few weeks spent together in Italy and so in awe of God's creation, there was nothing for me to do but cry happy tears. Fans who follow the Kardashians know that they really do it up when it comes to parties. In April 2019, Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson's daughter True celebrated her first birthday with an elaborate celebration, complete with unicorns, butterflies and a ton of balloons. I have been thinking about her party for months and months and months now. All About Balloon CEO Katie Byrne, who didn't design True's party but has helmed events for the White House, spoke to People about Chloe's setup, noting that there were multiple arrangements, including a wall that had over 2,000 balloons and multiple arches that had around 300 balloons each. Byrne claimed that all of that probably cost Chloe somewhere in the realm of $8,500 and was likely deflated by morning. Fans of Rob Kardashian may not know that he has a very spendy hobby, collecting rare trading cards. In October 2020, TMZ reported that Rob went on a late-night shopping spree at his favorite store, The Bullpen in Los Angeles, where he reportedly bought a case of cards, which comes with around 20 boxes. It's unclear exactly how much he paid for the case, but according to TMZ, these things can cost tens of thousands of dollars. Why would I joke with that? I don't joke with that. But it looks like Rob's recent purchase paid off. As part of the collection, he came across multiple top-notch finds, including an insanely rare Tom Brady card. Multiple outlets reported that that particular card could possibly be worth around $250,000 if it weren't damaged. Shortly after the news broke, the bullpen shared a snap of the card on Instagram, where it appears to be in perfect condition. In 2017, TMZ reported that Kim secretly bid on and won a very expensive timepiece belonging to former First Lady Jackie Kennedy. At a Christie's auction, Kim supposedly bid $379,500 on Jackie O's personally engraved Cartier watch. Kennedy had received the piece as a gift from her brother-in-law in 1963. But while money clearly isn't an issue for any of the Kardashians, Kim may have overpaid for the item. I don't get it! The auction listed the estimated sale price of the watch at anywhere from $60,000 to $120,000. Kim's winning bid was well over three times the expected selling price. TMZ reported that Kardashian planned to wear the watch, even though she, quote, vowed not to be flashy since she was robbed in Paris in 2016. Just in case you think your Postmates bill is getting too high these days, Kylie's activity is about to make you feel a whole lot better about your addiction to ordering in. Back in January 2019, Postmates revealed on their Spotlight series, The Receipt, that Jenna reportedly dropped around $10,000 on 186 orders over the course of a year in 2018. According to the series, most of Kylie's orders were placed around 10 a.m., and she often requested items from grocery stores like Ralph's and Bristol Farms. Hey, if you're Kylie Jenner, you certainly don't stand in line at the grocery store. Her typical purchases ranged from high-end items, like a roughly $160 bottle of Don Julio and Yeo 1942 tequila, to extremely cheap items, like a single carrot. According to TMZ, apparently she needed the carrot for some matzo ball soup she was making and couldn't be bothered with making a run to the market. But Jenna wasn't just ordering for herself. She would often pick up the entire tab for a photo shoot crew, which would sometimes lead to up to five Postmates orders a day. You did great, another one for the Bucks kids. <laughs> now you can feel better about that Starbucks you don't feel like going to get yourself. Sometimes when it comes to selecting the perfect gift for a loved one, you simply must take the gag gift route. And even the Kardashians, who are known to spend thousands of dollars on each other, are here for a funny present every once in a while. But in keeping with the rest of their spending, their silly gifts are a lot more expensive than what the average person would spend on a ridiculous little present. In June 2019, Kim poked fun at sister Chloe's single relationship status after her breakup with her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Tristan Thompson. Kim decided that Chloe needed a little, um, eggplant in her life and gifted her a limited edition $4,500 crystal-covered Judith Lieber purse in the shape of one. 
And while that probably seems like a lot of money for a tiny clutch that can probably only fit some change and maybe a lipstick, for the Kardashians, money is obviously no object. It's not even Chloe's only luxury bag from the designer. Kim shared the eggplant purse on her Instagram stories and played into its obvious connotations, writing, I just thought it was really fitting for her, and she loves it, guys. So she's definitely getting some eggplant for her birthday. Yeah, I mean, I think my wish for Chloe is just to have so much fun and just live life. When your parent is a Kardashian, there are some pretty crazy rules you have to follow. From Kanye's pink prejudice to Courtney's overbearing candy restrictions, growing up in the house of Kardashian definitely has its drawbacks. Since the Kardashians built their empire by sharing their daily lives with the world, it might not be surprising that filming is the top priority for their kids. It's so important that Kourtney Kardashian's oldest son, Mason Disick, reportedly had his entire schedule shifted around in 2015 so he could spend more time in front of the cameras. A family friend told Radar that, rather than enrolling Mason in kindergarten, the then six-year-old was being homeschooled. Although Mason may not be in a classroom every day, he still gets to go on exciting field trips. In 2018, when Courtney was still dating model Eunice Benjama, the group enjoyed a vacation on the Amalfi Coast in Italy. The same year, he also spent some time in Bali with his mom and dad, Scott Disick. Khloe Kardashian's children won't be watching their famous family on the small screen anytime soon. In a post shared to her since-defunct app in 2018, she laid out all her dreams and rules for her daughter, True. On the app, Chloe wrote that it will be years before her little one is able to watch the hit E! series, declaring, My child will be 13 when they watch their first episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. All I'm trying to do is bring more love into my life and into my family. With a few rare exceptions, it was once unusual to see Northwest wearing the color pink. And that's apparently for a reason. In 2015, a source told Radar that her fashion designer dad, Kanye West, hates when women wear the color. The insider revealed, Kim had always loved wearing pink before meeting Kanye, but he hates the color. Kanye thinks it's just cliché for women to wear pink. Kanye doesn't want their daughter dressed in pink ever. According to the outlet, when Kim and Kanye were out of town, Kanye even made his daughter's nanny take pictures of North's outfits. The nanny then had to send the pictures to Kanye for his approval. The source continued, The nanny has been tasked with making sure that North is never in pink. Perhaps that's why the mom and daughter duo stepped out in a matching pink look for Valentine's Day 2022, shortly after Kim and Kanye announced they were getting a divorce. Notably, the color has since been restored as a staple of Kim and North's wardrobe. While speaking to Rolling Stone in 2018, Travis Scott revealed that he and Kylie Jenner aren't allowing their firstborn, Stormy Webster, to watch television at all. He told the outlet, Today's kids are on iPads. There's so much technology, they don't play outside anymore. That's why, with Stormy, no TV. However, it's unclear if the on-again, off-again couple enforces this rule. After all, just a year after Scott told Rolling Stone that TV was off-limits for his daughter, Kylie uploaded a video to her Instagram showing Stormy transfixed by a blaring television set. The caption even jokingly read, Just disrespectful. Northwest can wear her natural locks however she wants, but she has limits on how often she can straighten her hair. This revelation came on Twitter in 2018, when Kim Kardashian posted a photo of North with noticeably sleek hair. The picture caused a fan to respond, Don't straighten her hair too much, it'll ruin her curls. The beauty mogul tweeted back that her daughter was allowed to straighten her hair twice a year on her birthday, as well as the day of her birthday party. The reality star then added, This pic was taken back in June on her birthday. Despite the backlash, Kardashian has tried to help her daughter embrace her curly hair. During an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, she took classes to learn how to style her daughter's hair. Moreover, in a 2018 chat with Interview Magazine, Kim said she and her daughter have open conversations about her hair. Kim told the magazine, She's obsessed with her curly hair, and if she finds someone who has the same hair, she runs to them and is like, You have curly hair like me? And we get to talk about it. Even casual fans of Keeping Up With The Kardashians know that Kourtney is a health nut. However, she also makes her children follow a similar lifestyle. In 2016, Kourtney revealed on her since-shuttered app, Court, that she had dropped dairy and gluten from her children's diets. And how are the kids handling it? They, like, hate me. 
The reality star then went on to cite the positive effects the restrictions have had on her own lifestyle. Courtney wrote on the app, I have always felt fine before when eating dairy and gluten, but I do believe that we have one life to live and I would like to live it feeling my best. I have noticed a great positive change in behavior with my children when we stick to a gluten-free and dairy-free diet. While admitting that she avoids foods with artificial dyes and food coloring, like candy and cupcakes, Courtney added that she sometimes allows her kids to eat the occasional treat. Courtney wrote, I do let the kids have popcorn at the movies and a churro at Disneyland. Kourtney Kardashian has always been open about what her kids can and can't eat, but even the way the food is cooked is important. In 2017, Courtney wrote on her app, One kitchen appliance I never use is a microwave. If anything needs to be heated up, I prefer to use the oven, stovetop, or toaster oven instead. As for why she's not a fan of microwaves, Courtney explained, When I had Mason, I did a lot of health-related research and decided to get rid of my microwave. When I read that toxins from plastic containers can be transferred to food when reheated, this applies to BPA-free plastic containers too. She then went on to explain that using a toaster oven to heat food was just as efficient as using a microwave. It also meant that she could make sure everything was cooked to a safe temperature. While Courtney didn't back up her statements with links to any actual science, the reality TV star revealed that she likes to exercise caution when it comes to her children. There's nothing wrong with discussing healthy eating habits and positive body image with your kids. But has Kourtney Kardashian taken this approach a step too far? For example, in a June 2016 episode of her family's show, Kourtney objected to Kris Jenner's use of the word fat in front of her daughter, Penelope. It started with Jenner posing a simple question to Kourtney. Do I look fat? Kardashian, between bites of salad, declared, Don't use that word in front of my daughter, please. Chris seemed to be a bit perplexed by the response. However, Courtney knows what it's like to struggle with weight gain and body shaming, having dealt with both as a public figure. So we can't say we blame her for being proactive and protecting her daughter in such a manner. You could be forgiven for thinking that the Kardashian-Jenner kids have free reign when it comes to their day-to-day -day lives, but that simply isn't the case. In fact, when it comes to her daughter's schedule, Khloe Kardashian is extremely disciplined. During an appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Khloe revealed, I am really strict. I have a schedule. I'm very militant with how I parent, true, and I believe that a schedule saves everything. And not all of my siblings are the same. In December 2022, Kourtney Kardashian tried to gather more information on her sister's strict parenting style during a Vanity Fair interview in which the two were hooked up to a lie detector. Are you ever gonna let True sleep over at my house? Probably not. Chloe refused to reveal why she wouldn't let her daughter enjoy a sleepover at her aunt's place. As a result, Courtney implied that her younger sis may have been worried that her daughter would have too much fun. Or it could just be that Chloe didn't want True staying up all night partying with her cousins. Whatever the real reason is, Chloe's refusal to let her daughter go to a sleepover is another indication of the strict schedule that True has to deal with. Since the Kardashian-Jenner kids live ritzy lives in front of the camera, looking good has become somewhat of a job for them. As a result, it's not surprising that Kim Kardashian's daughter, Northwest, is rumored to have her own team of stylists and beauty experts in place. In 2016, Life & Style reported that Kim was spending as much as $5,000 per week on a glam squad for her then three-year-old daughter. A source suggested to the tabloid that North's wardrobe included everything from Hermes handbags to Balma dresses. And seeing as she's the daughter of occasional fashion designer Kanye West, it makes sense that North has also dabbled with beauty styling. In 2022, Kim revealed on Twitter that North had styled her younger siblings, Saint, Chicago, and Psalm, as part of a photo shoot for Vogue magazine. The social media accounts of Kim Kardashian and her sisters suggest that they're all raising their own families while running successful businesses and filming their Hulu TV show. However, much like other celebrities, the Kardashian and Jenner clans reportedly have teams of nannies helping them look after the kids. For instance, in 2016, a source claimed to Heat magazine that Kim Kardashian and Kanye West had a whole staff of nannies who were responsible for keeping the children organized. The outlet also claimed that the nannies were responsible for taking the kids away if they started crying too much. Meanwhile, as of 2023, Khloe Kardashian employs two nannies, Andreza Cooper and Monica Longenbach. Unlike her sisters, she has even shared photos of them on social media. Cooper gave an interview about her role working for Khloe, telling Papo Jime, 
In my current job, I'm babysitting for sure, but I started out as a newborn care specialist. As we travel a lot internationally, I also monitor her sleep because there are a lot of time zones. So to change, I always travel with her when she is international. Basically, it sounds as though the nannies are on hand 24 seven for the Kardashian kids. So this means the kids can't get into too much mischief no matter where they are in the world. TikTok's popularity continues to grow, and even the Kardashian kids love the social media platform. In fact, Northwest shares a TikTok profile with her mom and is a huge fan of posting new content. However, Kim Kardashian has made sure that her daughter's social media presence is constantly monitored. This is why North doesn't have her own personal account on the service. During an interview on Gwyneth Paltrow's The Goop podcast, Kim revealed, TikTok can only be on my own phone. It's not something where she can scroll and look at things. Kim also explained that she and her daughter never comment on any TikTok videos. The account is simply used as a means for North to express herself creatively. Kim told Paltrow, she loves to do it and it makes her so happy. She's so innocent in so many ways. While much of Kim's business is based around her own social media output, it sounds as though she's being extremely careful with how her children are introduced to the internet, which is admirable.